It is time for our Sunrise Smart Start. A 21-year-old woman taken to the hospital after a shooting overnight in Rochester. Police responding to Bremen Street around 1.30 for the report of a person shot. We're told the victim has non-life-threatening injuries. No suspects are in custody. If you have any information, call 911. A teenager has died after a shooting over the weekend in a parking lot at a Rochester City school. Reese police found 16-year-old Keon Martin in a car on Falmouth Drive in Greece around 1 a.m. Sunday. Investigators say Martin was shot in a parked car at School 34 on Lexington Avenue in Rochester. A second person in the car then drove to Greece before calling 911. No suspects are in custody. Again, here, anyone with information asked to call 911. A 32-year-old man is in custody after a murder inside an apartment complex on Resolute Circle. Police say Evan Guzman allegedly stabbed the victim multiple times and fled on foot. He has been charged with murder in the second degree. Guzman was released from prison last April. He has three prior felony convictions as well as three prior misdemeanor convictions. Well, Congress is home for the July 4th uh, recess, but there is still work happening behind the scenes to tee up a successful vote on a bipartisan infrastructure deal when they return. Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke is with us this morning. Anna, good morning. There are talks of breaking this bill down into several bills. How likely is that? Uh, good morning. Well, when senators return back here to Washington next week, they have a hefty to-do list to complete before they return back home for the August recess. And on the top of that list, like you said, is this massive infrastructure deal, this bipartisan deal that uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have spent um, the past uh, several uh, days going around the country, touring and uh, pitching this deal directly to the American people. This is a $973 billion deal. It's bipartisan. And it does does seem to be that this bill uh, will be uh, the only uh, chance for an infrastructure plan to pass through uh, Congress at this point. But because it is bipartisan, both Democrats and Republicans uh, say that there are things in this bill that they uh, would like to see in future uh, bills that didn't make it into this bipartisan deal. So there is talks of um, possibly more uh, legislation moving forward. But both sides have said that and getting anything across this finish line, uh, any deal right now would be a big win for both sides. All right, Anna, thank you so much. Many Democrats in Congress have said that there should be a separate part of the bill focusing solely on climate issues. Well, the FBI is investigating what some experts say may become one of the world's largest ransomware attacks. After recent ransomware breaches at Colonial Pipeline and JBS, a major meat processor, Homeland Security warning in a recent intelligence report that ransomware attacks are likely to increase in the near and long term. Hackers hit the IT software company Kaseya Friday. The company says hackers gained access to the network management system. Lots of criminal organizations are finding out that they can get paid millions of dollars to disrupt our economy. If you compromise Kaseya, you can then take over the Kaseya infrastructure to help broadcast ransomware to all of those unwitting victims. These are largely Russian-affiliated entities. These organizations are able to operate with relative impunity because there's not really any enforcement from the Russian state. President Biden says intelligence officials are investigating the recent cyber attacks. Last month, he warned Russian President Vladimir Putin to rein in cyber criminals or face strong responses from the U.S. Evacuations are underway as Florida braces for tropical storm Elsa. Flood-prone areas north of Tampa are evacuating with the storm expected to make landfall in the next 24 hours. Elsa is expected to strengthen slightly and bring strong winds, heavy rain, and flooding in the coming days. The storm is threatening parts of the Florida Keys as well and the Gulf Coast. You never know what happened. You never know what could happen. You know, so just taking all safety precautions so you'll be ready. Elsa ripped through parts of Cuba with winds up to 50 miles per hour and up to 10 inches of rain in some areas. Three people have been killed in the Caribbean since last week associated with this storm. An emergency crews continue to search through the rubble in Surfside, Florida, as the tropical storm approaches. Five more people have been pronounced dead, bringing the official death toll right now to 28, but at least 118 are still missing. Miami-Dade officials say the decision to bring down the remaining part of the building Sunday has sped up the search process. 
James Gilbert with us. A stormy across some parts of our viewing area this morning, James. Yeah, a lot of flashes. We had some uh, first over Lake Ontario, and now we're looking south uh, for some of those storms. You can see them now across the uh, southern tier and then very uh, bottom part of the Finger Lakes there. Some of the strongest stuff kind of on the bottom edge of Seneca Lake there. We're thinking about maybe getting a quick hike in. Why not? Uh, just remember to bring a lot of water because it will be hot. Uh, my forecast high for the temperature is 88, but you add that heat index and it will make it feel like the lower 90s. We'll have the commute forecast coming up at the end of the show. Aren't they? All right, uh, James, thank you. Lots of folks, of course, headed back to work today. Smooth sailing so far on the roads with our sunrise traffic. Uh, traffic flowing nicely over the Douglas Anthony Bridge at this hour. 390, 490, and 590 all on time. Now for the latest on COVID-19, as events and organizations begin to reopen to full capacity, summer camps are back as well. Many say the socialization is especially important for those with special needs. Carmela Boykin live at Camp Hacamo this morning with what makes that return to camp so valuable for these youngsters and young adults. Carmela, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Leah. I'm outside Camp Hakamo, where people with special needs ages 7 to 30 are able to enjoy a week long of camp. And as organizations and companies reopen, camp is returning as well. I spoke with former camper turned counselor Haley Gravel, who says attending Camp Hakamo has helped her find her passion, helping others. I was like, oh my God, I really like this kind of field. I want to help out. Like, I don't want to just sit around and play. I want to help. I want to like be a role model for these people. And even with COVID restrictions for a vulnerable population, she's looking forward to going back. It's going to be really different, so I'm really excited that it's back, but I'm also a little nervous to see how it goes. And Camp Director Allison Schmidt says that hearing how camp has benefited Haley has, quote, made her life. She also says the goal of camp is helping the current campers while also creating the next generation of people who care. Reporting in Rush, Carmela Boykin, News 8. All right, Mark. Carmela, thank you. This year, Camp Hackamo celebrating its 65th anniversary. The program is sponsored by the Rochester Rotary Club. Time now for a check of the GRE morning business report on this Tuesday. Moderna says its COVID-19 vaccine demonstrated protectivity uh, against the more contagious strain first discovered in India. Last month, a Pfizer official said the same about its vaccine. The rapid spread of this Delta variant has caused some health officials to encourage mask use again, regardless of your vaccine status. Well, more stimulus checks are hitting bank accounts nationwide. The IRS says it has issued another 2.3 million checks. Some of those payments included an increase for people who received less money than they were entitled to in earlier distributions. In this round, payments are also going to people the IRS previously didn't have enough information about. Well, uh, here's what some folks might be talking about at the old water cooler this morning. The match four begins today. Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady going against Bryson DeChambeau and Aaron Rodgers. The reserve at Moonlight Basin in Big Sky, Montana will be the host this year. Tea time is set for 5 o'clock. Brady and Lefty lost to Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning in the match two last May. Hmm. Somehow we jumped from two to four. It'd be interesting to see, uh, you know, uh, how it goes this time around. <laughs> yeah. With, uh, yeah, I'll be watching. DeChambeau and that big drive. We'll see uh, if that factors in mm -hmm. uh, into this match. Yeah, I'll probably tune Gonna in for some of that tonight. Definitely tune in for that. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of drama lines, I feel like, uh, you know, with Aaron Rodgers and what's going on with him That's and true. Green Bay. See if that comes up during the round at <laughs> all. Right. A lot of times, you know, during the round of golf, those kind of conversations can come up. Mm -hmm. Can so happen. People are listening intently. Right, exactly. <laughs> to see what's going on there. Folks watching right now and they want to perhaps play a round or two? Yeah, I think you're great for the morning tea time around Rochester. Maybe if you're teeing off uh, at one of the courses in the Finger Lakes, you might have to wait uh, an hour and a, to an hour and a half for those storm systems to move out. But once they do move out, you should be in the clear for commuting to work uh, this morning. There's your forecast. Uh, we're starting off in the 70s. You'll walk outside and you'll immediately notice the humidity. It's a muggy out there to start up. So we've got some dry time this morning, but watch out for showers, a couple of thunderstorms 
that do move through this afternoon. We'll finish off with the eight-day forecast you see here. Uh, so not only today, but kind of a busy week. Tomorrow we've got a couple of showers and thunderstorms, and then we bump that rain chance all the way up to 70% on Thursday. I think off and on storms pretty much the entire time there. And then we should quiet as we, as we get uh, get into the weekend. Yeah, it looks like good timing for the weekend. I think so far as of right now, I'll keep the rain chances in there, a little bit warmer, but not as much as we will see the next couple days. All right, thank you so much, and thank you for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is up next. Uh, be safe and have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.